अनिरोधम अनुत्पादम अनुच्छेदम अशाश्वतम आने का अर्थम नाना अर्थम आगमम अनिर्गमम या प्रतीत समुत्पादम उपशमम शिवम देशी मासा तम बुद्धस्तम वंदे वधताम वरम मोस्ट रिस्पेक्टेड पिक्चर संग His Eminence Miguel Rimbocheji, Head of our Institute, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Kishimo Santinji, all of our faculty's members, member of the research faculty, and staff members of the institute, and dear friends, it is great opportunity for me to convene. the special talk meditation for mental peace and happiness by venerable mingyor rimboche ji rimboche ji is an international well known buddhist meditation master author of many well known international best selling books on the buddhist meditation and under his guidance there are hundreds of buddhist meditation centers all over the world with the thousand of followers although rimboche is very well known buddhist meditation master who need not to be introduction in case there are some uh, who don't know him very well i will present here a very brief uh, biography of the rimboche ji Uh, Mikhail Rinpoche ji was born in Nubri, Nepal in 1975. At the age of 3, he was recognized by Gyabje Dingo Khenche Rinpoche as the incarnation of Yonge Mikhail Rinpoche, who was the great Tibetan yogi. From an early age, he showed great aptitude in his studies and mastered all the five main branches of the learning in the tibetan buddhist tradition in addition to his studies migyur rumboche has completed several long period of the personal retreat and has continuously received teachings and instructions from many great masters including his father the renowned zokchen master tulgu urian rumboche ji tai situ rumboche salje rumboche and Yoshi Ken Rumboche he has traveled several time to the west including visit to the france america giving the teaching and retreats rumboche teach with a remarkable depth and scholarship in early june 2011 migi rumboche left his monastery in bodh gaya india to begin in the period of extended solitary retreat he returned in the november 2015 and currently teaching his monastic and western students living around the world we are indeed very fortunate to have the rimboche ji come here on our invitation and accept our request to give us a talk on uh, meditation for mental peace and happiness uh, thanks you very much rimboche ji uh, according to me uh while philosophy could be taken as eyes at the same time meditation is like a feet which take us to the, our destination in other words philosophy and meditation are like the two wings of the bird without these two wings it is not possible to proceed toward the nirvana from the sansara therefore thanks you very much rimboche ji for giving us Uh, some of your precious time we are indeed very grateful to you for the coming here to kindly uh, coming to our institute first of all i would like to uh, uh, our honorable vice chancellor keshi ngong something ji to formally uh, welcome rimboche ji Honorable Bhikshu Sangh, Reverend uh, Rinpoche, the faculty members, staff members, and dear students, it is a great pleasure 
um, for me to have Rinpoche here amidst us. We, we have been thinking of having him with us uh, uh, quite for uh, last many years. But um, last year when I met him personally, and I requested him to be with us, and then he uh, gladly accepted. And also we fixed a time, but uh, that uh, which was available for Rinpoche, and uh, he was uh, in India at that time. But uh, since that was a time when we uh, had our examination, so that was not possible uh, to arrange uh, his visit. So this time, so well in advance, uh, Rinpoche and we had in, uh, been in contact and then fixed this time. So we, we are really very fortunate to have you, Rinpoche, here. And uh, uh, I really um, express my gratitude uh, for sparing some time to be with us. Uh, the meditation, Rinpoche, as uh, uh, Professor Wang Chudor Ji has uh, uh, said earlier, Rinpoche has uh, been in the tradition of meditation and study and contemplation and meditation. So, which uh, he started from very early age, the three things, Shravan, Chintan, and Manan, the study, contemplation, and meditation. The meditation here means uh, embodiment and internalization of the uh, things that he has already contemplated on and he has studied on. So this started from his early, very early age, which uh, all of these three uh, things went together in his life and he has been carrying uh, this. Uh, and, uh, and as a result of this, uh, he is benefiting thousands of people, millions of people around the world. So this tradition, as we know, is uh, uh, from the uh, Tibetan Buddhism, which again is traced back to the ancient Nalanda Vikramashila, Takshishila tradition, in which uh, uh, there is a very rich uh, scholarly tradition of uh, you know, exploring the realities not in the sense of uh, just uh, having kind of mystic feelings and, uh, and then uh, kind of just simply confined to belief system, but uh, exploration of reality of external world, exploration of reality of inner world, internal world, and uh, particularly the system of mind, which itself is so complex and so deep and so mysterious uh, that uh, Apparently, we s most of the 99.9 .9 people are acquainted with the external world, but not acquainted with the internal world. The internal world itself is so complex. In fact, the internal world is more complex and more deeper and profound than the world we uh, encounter with our uh, senses. So this has been explored uh, in the ancient Indian tradition. What is this uh, inner world? what actually this is constituted by. And then to understand this, it is necessary to understand the details and the complex of the mind system of mind. And now these days, as His Holiness the Dalai Lama says, the science of mind. And actually this is, the modern science is more kind of dedicated towards the, the science of material world, whereas the ancient Indian tradition, and particularly the Nalanda tradition has uh, uh, been focusing on the, the, the uh, exploration of the inner world, particularly the mind, um, the mental world. And as a result, they have been able to find out the details to such a extreme units of the mind and then to work on them. And that is how there is not only the system of mind is explored, but also how to train those mind, how to train the mind and how to cope with those uh, negative mental states, and how to, uh, you know, the the um, how to uh, the uh, improve, and then uh, uh, and 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 then um, uh, further the positive uh, mental you know, the episodes and uh, mental factors. And in such a manner, there are very extremely systematic uh, uh, tradition of uh, training the mind and then 
the spiritual gradual processes through which the mind can be trained and then achieve happiness. So this, uh, the science of mind and the training of the mind through which one can attain happiness uh, has been the greatest kind of, you know, the treasure of uh, the Buddhism uh, that uh, is preserved in Tibet, clubbed with the, the uh, scholarly tradition, because these are to be studied with the uh, enormous tradition of uh, scholarship, and then grounded on that, then there is a process of contemplation and uh, internalization. So that is why how Rinpoche is a product of this uh, tradition, and then since very young age, he has been actively uh, not only teaching but meditating, and then as a result of that, he has been teaching uh, to, as it has been said, uh, teaching to millions of people around the world, and uh, then has written a number of books, and in one of the book, which is, uh, the subtitle is uh, Unlocking the Secret and Science of Happiness. This is really, it is not just, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, Kind, kind of metaphoric expression, but it is a real, re the reality, the unlocking, the secret and science of happiness. Really, if you explore the mind, then there we find the key, how to achieve happiness, how to unlock those secrets, and how to unlock the, you know, unlock and achieve happiness. These are all, you know, not in the form of metaphorical and mysterious kind of, uh, in a mysterious sense, but in reality, these are practiced and found and achievable and doable. And that is what uh, Rinpoche has been doing. We really appreciate what uh, Rinpoche has been doing uh, around the world. He has disciples and students uh, all over the world, in the Western world and in Asian countries, and in, of course, in, in Tibetan uh, tradition uh, community and in Indian uh, uh, places. So, taking this advantage, uh, I would like to uh, express the gratitude for Rinpoche for uh, benefiting um, not only in maintaining the tradition, intellectual tradition, but also uh, you know, sharing it uh, with a large number of uh, audience. So, I would like to, so we are already celebrating and we, it has already been completed, the one the um, the fiftieth golden uh, the golden jubilee of the the establishment of this university. So on this occasion, I would like to uh, present Rinpoche the souvenir and uh, uh, sign of our gratitude to you, Rinpoche. Um, I'm very happy to be here at the university today and uh, as um, uh, Vice Chancellor uh, requests me to come here um, to give some speech. So today uh, my speech is about the uh, Meditation. So, first, I would like to um, request all of us practice a little bit <coughs> about <coughs> awareness meditation. So, please, um, everyone, keep your spine straight. L loosely straight and close eyes and feel the body. 
feel the gravity in the body and relax muscles starting from top of the head and be aware of any sensation on the top of your head and move from head to face Be aware of any sensation in your face. Back of the head, relax, muscles in the back of the head. And be aware of any sensation, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Or maybe there's no sensation. Be aware to be aware of even there's no sensation. Now move to the neck. Same as relax muscles in your neck and to be aware of any sensation. Shoulders, relax your shoulder, right and left shoulders. And to be aware of any sensation in your shoulder. Now back. From upper back to lower back. Be aware of any sensation in your back. Now, chest. Be aware of any sensation in your chest. Let it be. Don't try to control the sensation. Don't look for pleasant sensation. Don't avoid unpleasant sensation. Just simply observe and let it be. Now move to the stomach. Don't tight or squeeze your stomach. Relax muscles in your stomach and to be aware of any sensation in your stomach. Now attention move into your legs and arms. Right and left arms and the right and left legs. To be aware of any sensation in your arms and legs. Let it be. Now be aware of entire your body and watch the sensation from head to feet. It doesn't matter. Pleasant sensation, unpleasant sensation, neutral or no sensation. Don't try to control the sensation. 
Don't suppress. Let it be. If you observe the sensation, then you are fine. All these sensations are in the awareness. Let sensation arise in the awareness, be in the awareness, let dissolve into awareness. Be yourself, be free. Okay, now please open your eyes. So, how was it? So, maybe while you are aware of the body and sensation, you, you might have a lot of thoughts, right? Thinking about the past, future plan. There's a lot of yada, yada, yada in our head. Talking. Where I can find the sensation? Sometimes when you look for sensation, you cannot find sensation. Or you might have unpleasant sensation, which is you don't like. Or you're particularly looking for pleasant sensation, like peace, calm. When we look for peace and calm, they will say, I'm busy. They don't want to come. And when we try to avoid unpleasant sensation, and they will say, I'm here. <laughs> they will come more. Same as thought. So we have a lot of thought. And when we say, don't think, then we think more. Right? But when we need to think, oh, now I have to study. Okay. Then our mind becomes blank. Especially when you do exam, right? <laughs> Very important moment, okay, today I memorize all these things and I have to give all the answer. <clears throat> so pen and paper, and mind become blank. <laughs> and after finish exam, when you go out, oh, I remember the answer. <laughs> so, that's the what we call, our mind is like crazy monkey. Our mind is not pliable, workable. And the most of the time, our mind does the opposite, right? When we say yes, mind says no. When you say no, monkey mind says yes. I don't want to be worried. I want to be peace. Then you become more worried. Okay. Today, from today on, I want to be nice, kind, with big smile. But then, if you met your friend or your colleague, which is irritating you, <laughs> after three minutes later, anger comes like bomb explosion. And then you may express Maybe not nice word or <laughs> not nice attitude. After you're done, you regret. Oh dear, I shouldn't do that. So that is the, the causes of suffering. The base of suffering is ignorant. And then from ignorant, there's aversion and craving, craving. So it's like if you want to drive a car, first you have to own the engine, right? So engine like ignorant. Then we have 
accelerator and brake, like aversion and craving, attachment. So through that, then we will have suffering of samsara, car of samsara, and this go on. So as Vice Chancellor mentioned about that, there's a lot of great things within us, within our mind, that we can explore, that we can discover. There's unlimited discovery within ourselves. The inner world is more interesting than outer world. So we have awareness, we have clarity, we have mindfulness, we have wisdom, we have love and compassion, we have skills, capacity, so many things are within us. So the meditation technique is to recognize our innate quality our potential, and to find the real answer within us. As uh, Buddha Shakyamuni, seeking for great answer, he was a king, right? The prin princess, prince. So although he has luxury, palace, nice uh, parent, Wonderful life, but he felt that something is missing. Then he went to search the answer. He learned so many different philosophy and the different tradition of meditation, but still didn't find answer. And he even did six years of meditation. In the end, he went to Bodhgaya and sat down under Bodhi tree and let go. Let go of all the philosophy, all the meditations. Be, let be as it is, as it is. Then he found the great realization, great answer. The answer is, everything is there. You don't need to look somewhere else. Yeah. So, Therefore, for the meditation, there are many different uh, levels of the meditation. The first meditation is what we call karma biting meditation, shamatha. And for that, the first important is we have to recognize awareness. So the, what we call the essence of meditation is awareness. So what is awareness? Awareness meaning knowing knows what you are thinking, what you are feeling, what you are doing, what you are seeing, that is awareness. So, to connect with that awareness, we need to use object. Awareness is like light. You know, in this room, we have light, right? Do we have light in the room? Yes. Can you see the light? You can see light, right? You can see light on my face, on the wall, on the ground, on the ceiling. But it's not so easy to see light in the empty space, isn't it? Not so easy, although there's light. So therefore, the nature of this, our mind, is Shunyeda, there's a lot of great, uh, which is emptiness, there's a lot of great qualities are there, but at the beginning, not easy to grab that. <coughs> so we need to use support. We can see light on the wall, so we can connect with the awareness through object, through breath, the breathing meditation, anapana or through sound, and just what we did is through sensation with the body, right? So, but when we are aware of the breath, the most important thing is the awareness, not the breath. 
Bread is just support for awareness. So it doesn't matter. Slow breath, deep breath, shallow breath, good. Breathing is not so comfortable. Or smooth breath, it doesn't matter. Most important is, whatever your natural breath, and you just, just be aware of it, as it is. Be aware of as it is. Okay? So, maybe, um, maybe I will introduce more about awareness. Now, you remember about awareness? What did I say? What is the awareness? Knowing, Knowing right? Uh, maybe we will do one simple exercise. Please raise your hand. Do you know you're raising hand? Yes? yes? Yeah, that's awareness. <laughs> do you feel any sensation in your hand? If you continue, raise your hand, please. If you feel cold, shake your hand. Okay. Do you know you have this cold sensation? Yeah, that is awareness. And how many of you feel warm? Shake your hand. Yeah, you know. Do you know that you are feeling warm here in your palm? Yes? That is awareness. And how many of you don't feel anything? Cannot find any sensation? Shake hand. Yeah. You know that you cannot find, right? That is also awareness. So for the awareness, it doesn't matter. Warm, cold, no sensation, it doesn't matter. Continue, raise your hand, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, how many of you have pain here? <laughs> okay, that is unpleasant sensation. So do you know that you're having pain? Yeah, that's awareness. So now, put your hand down. Do you feel relaxed? That is a pleasant sensation. So when you feel relaxed, if you know, if you're aware that you're feeling relaxed, that is also awareness. So it's very simple, actually, just to be aware of it. And it doesn't matter, the object. Cold, warm, neutral, or even there's no sensation or pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, doesn't matter. Just to be aware of it. Okay, so now um, there are few different types of meditation technique at the beginning. We need to begin with uh, some objects. So few choice, one is breathing, one is the mental recitation. Another is maybe sound. So which one you prefer? Sound, raise your hand. Okay. Breath. Hmm. Mental recitation. Okay. Breath. So how many of you Breathing right now, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> of course, right? Do you know you are breathing? Yeah, yeah that is awareness. <laughs> you are aware of your breath right now. Very simple. That's all. So just simply be aware of your breath. So breathing in, breathing out. One need to count. So in the Abhidharma, Kosha said first step of the breathing meditation is just count. Count until 10. So breathing in, out, one. In, out, two. Just like that. So now we're going to practice this together. And uh, the meditation posture there are <clears throat> many, normally what we call seven-point 
uh, viral China posture. But uh, make it simple, only two. So first is keep your spine straight all the way to head. Loosely straight because the spine naturally a little bit curved, right? That's okay. That's the first one. Second, relax your shoulder and the arms, legs, the relaxed muscles in your body as it is. Okay, now please keep your spine loosely straight and balance your feet. You're sitting on the chair, touch both of, feet to the, both of feet to the ground, balance. And now please close your eyes and feel your body. Feel the gravity in your body. And scan your body from head to feet, same as before. Observe whatever sensation there in your body. Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, it doesn't matter. Just simply to be aware of it. Now please bring your awareness on your breath. Be aware of your breath. Breathing in, breathing out, count until 10. Now, please open your eyes. Okay. How was it? How many of you finished 10? Raise your hand. Great. And how many of you count less than 10? Raise your hand. Yeah. So there are many different breathing styles. Some of you the style of your breath is deep, you know, so very slow. Some of you are shallow, fast. So whatever your breath, be as it is, and you're just aware of it. And how many of you, when you try to be aware of your breath, there are many thought comes. Bala, 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 yada, yada, yada. Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. That is normal. When we try to aware of breath, suddenly we hear the some sound, phone ringing, or the coughing, or, or about your past exam, or oh, that exam wasn't went well, or the future, you know, what should I do tomorrow? Soon we will have lunch. I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> so that's normal. But important thing is 
check that whether you are still remember your breath or not. Don't block this thought. You don't need to block. If you still remember your breath, you're okay. So many people have misunderstood about the meditation. They think meditation meaning think of nothing. So then when you focus on the breath and you're looking, did I think anything else? Do I think anything else? Oh, lunch is coming. <laughs> no lunch, no lunch. Then you forget your breath. So if lunch appears in your mind, let it be. Let lunch come, let lunch go. But the important is, don't forget your breath. Back to the breath again. Sometimes you can aware of the breath and the image of lunch comes as like background. You know, breathing in, breathing out. Chawal dal, right? Chawal dal comes, goes. Oh, it's okay. If you are still remember your breath, let it be. Don't block. You cannot block. Impossible, right? Should we try? <laughs> Maybe we will practice one special meditation, a meditation about Jawal Dal. <laughs> try, okay. So this meditation has special rule. For one minute, we're going to practice this meditation for one minute. You are not allowed to think of Jawalda for one minute. No Jawalda. Okay? So please keep your spine loosely straight. And now please close your eyes. And I will say one, two, three. When you hear three, no Jawalda. So first scan your body, relax muscles in your body, and to be aware of sensation from head to feet. One, two, three, no, Jawata. Don't think that I cannot think Jawal Dal, you know? Then you will think more. So, if you think Jawal Dal one second, you will lose this meditation. So, be careful. How was it? Easy or not easy? <laughs> Lord of Jawal Dal. <laughs> so when you say no Jawal Dal, then you think Jawal Dal more, right? Many style of Jawal Dal. Um, basmati rice. <laughs> uh, normal rice. And different type of dal. Uh, yellow dal, black dal. So, that is aversion. So, the three roots of the samsara, root of samsara, first is ignorant, right? The second is aversion and attachment. So when you try to block, control, control, suppress, then the opposite become more, aversion. So for the meditation, you don't need to block anything. Important is to connect with awareness. If you connect with awareness, whatever thought, emotion come, let them come. 
Let them go. Your mind back to the breath. Back to the breath. Remember your breath. And also no need to look for a special feeling, sensation. Don't look for peace, clarity, non-conceptual state of mind. Right? No need. As I mentioned before, if you look for peace, calm, calm, peace, then they will say, I'm busy, right? But if you don't care about the, those, they will come automatically. So when we meditate, there are three pleasant experiences, which is clarity, bliss, non-conceptual experience. And there's a two rough experience, which is dullness and agitation. So these two, both are same. So don't, the problem is we attach to that. It's very important to have clarity of awareness, but not the clarity of experience of clarity. Essence of meditation is not the peaceful, not the bliss or joy, not the clarity. The essence of meditation is awareness. So peaceful, clarity, joyful, dull, agitation, both are same. So in Tibet, we have example. From eastern Tibet to go to center Tibet, Lhasa, there's a lot of mountain up and down. When you go up, it's getting close to Lhasa. When you go down, also getting close to Lhasa. It's, it's journey. So therefore, for the meditation, we will have up and down. Three peaceful experience, two rough experience, but both are same. Important is awareness. And this awareness cannot be obscured by Dullness or agitation, or bliss, joy, clarity, non-conceptual experience, right? So the first important is recognize awareness, right? That's the wisdom. So awareness also has wisdom. To recognize awareness, recognize knowing is the wisdom also. So maybe I will do one examination not the teachers, I mean, uh, uh, for students, examination of awareness. Don't worry, there will be no failure. <laughs> awareness cannot be failed, okay? So I will ask three questions, and you can give answer whatever you feel or you think. You feel your thing, okay? So this is the examination of awareness. So how many of you know awareness now? Raise your hand. Okay. And how many of you not recognize awareness yet? Raise your hand. Mm -mm. Yeah, great. Okay. And how many of you not sure? Maybe this, maybe I know. Raise your hand. Okay. Now I will tell you the result. <laughs> Should I tell you or not? The result is all of you are pass. I told you that there's nothing, no, no one will fail, right? So all of you are pass. How did you pass? <laughs> of course, those who said, yes, I know awareness, of course you pass, right? And those who said, I don't know awareness, do you know that you don't know? If you know that you don't know awareness, that means you know awareness. <laughs> Isn't it? I don't know awareness. This is why you are raising hand. Otherwise, you cannot raise your hand. And those who said, oh, I'm not sure. Maybe I recognize, maybe not.
Do you know that you are not sure? <laughs> if you know you are not sure, that means you recognize awareness. You are aware that you are not sure. So, awareness is like what we call like ocean. Thought, emotion, feeling, perception is like a wave of the ocean. So, awareness is always there. But we need to recognize. So, once we connect with awareness, not just intellectually recognize, doesn't help. We have to practice. So, to practice, we need to use one object. So here we are using breath. And to maintain the recognition of awareness with the breath. So breathing in, breathing out. Of course, at the beginning, you cannot count until 10, right? Breathing in, breathing out, one. And then two. And then three. And jawaldal. <laughs> and you are in the restaurant eating jawaldal. And you don't know when you get in the restaurant, how you get there. Oop, I'm supposed to meditate on my breath. How did I get here? You lost. Again, back to the breath. Oh. Remember your breath. Breathing in, maybe three, four, five, and lost again. Jawal <laughs> Or oh, go to the past, go to the future. Oh, again, back to the breath. Then slowly you can count until 10. So when you count until 10, stop a little bit. And again, count from 1 to 10, again, stop. So when we try like that again and again, then our mind becomes more pliable, walkable. So the goal of meditation, special shamatha meditation, is to achieve mind become pliable, walkable. Less rama. Tang dro shadula rama So become pliable, walkable, when you want to think, you can think, when you want to rest, you can rest. So that is the, the goal of Shamada meditation. And from there, then we can start Vipassana, the inside meditation, which is to try to explore nature of the reality, such as impermanent, emptiness, so on. So, As I mentioned before, all the answer is here with us. So awareness is great, great gift. And we all have this awareness, doesn't matter who we are. And this awareness is with you all the time, isn't it? So important is we have to recognize, we have to discover this. And we need to maintain that recognition with the object first. So that's the meditation. So I will stop here and open for Q&A, question and answer. And if you have any question special related with uh, your own experience when you meditate, how um, you understand or not understand or focus more on the experience, experiential part, okay? so. Uh, welcome. First of all, I thanks very much for VC and other concerned persons to organizing these meditation se sessions. Um, when you remember to talk about uh, the Nam Nang Chudun, the seventh posture of uh, Bharijana, where we meditate, that we find that uh, the focus of your eyes should be on the tip of nose. Um, on the basis of my personal experience, actually I involved in meditations in 2007, 2011, mm -hmm. but it was not according to Mahan traditions, it was according to Theravada traditions, I guess, in Sarnath Goenka Center. 
Um, the, the reasons of closing eyes while we meditate is to escape ourselves from distractions. But if we go with the Nam Nang Chudin, that the sevenfold that we talk, um, should we just focus our eyes, focus on the teeth of nose, and at the same time focus on the breath? Or should I just uh, focus on the teeth of nose or breathing? Uh, I mean, so focus our eyes on the teeth of nose, and but mentally focus on the breathing? Uh, so that was my questions. Another question, the second question is, mm -hmm. as we already discussed that, the meditations and uh, philosophy in Buddhism is almost like two feathers, uh, for example, at a bird. But uh, it might be the case in an ancient time that we have both of them in monastic institutions. But uh, um, as far as my experience goes, uh, these days we don't have meditation sessions. Although it's uh, intellectually um, talked, but practically we are not talking about the meditations, especially in Mahana traditions. Whereas in Theravada traditions, we found that uh, they meditate every um, time after their uh, teaching. I just asked Rinpoche whether Rinpoche has any plans in future to initiate meditations in other ma uh, monastery institutions other than um, your monastery institutions. Or if Rinpoche will actually accept us if any of us approach to Rinpoche to uh, learn about Mahanic uh, meditations. Thank you. Mm -mm. Thank you. So the first related with the first question. So, eyes gaze, there are many different uh, style. So, basically there's two style, one is close, one is open. So what we call normally, when you practice shamatha, come abiding meditation, close eyes is better. And when you practice vipassana, open eyes is better. Or, if you are beginner meditator, clo close eyes, and as you get more experience about meditation, open eyes. So there are different recommendation. When you close your eyes, just close as natural. Like when you go to sleep, you close your eyes, right? You don't need to close particular way. And when you open eyes, there are three cases. The common one is as you mentioned, looking tip of your nose. But it doesn't mean you cross your eyes and to find your nose, not like that. If you do that, then you see double everything, you know, like this. <laughs> and forget about the meditation, you also <laughs> become like that. So the, the main meaning is almost like you're focusing on the space in front of your nose, here, the space. So when you open your eyes, your mind focus on the space, then your eyes gazing become more open. Little bit blur, but more open, spacious. Not particularly looking at one object. But again, don't look at the one object. Don't look at the one object. Then you will see object, you know. <laughs> Same as like Jawal Dal. No Jawal Dal. No Jawal Dal. Focus on the my nose, focus on the my nose, then you cannot find your nose. So, most important is relax. And if you don't know how to focus on the tip of nose, don't care. Just look at the object, doesn't matter. Look a little bit downward. That's the first. Second is straight. Third is a little bit upward. Special if you feel dull, dullness. When you feel dullness, meaning Sometimes when we meditate, we feel like uh, unclear, sometimes sleepy, and that time you have to look a little bit upward. Not too much like this, a little bit. Or when we feel agitation, a lot of thought, think a lot, you know. Sometimes when you begin to meditate, what we call waterfall experience, which is we feel like thoughts are getting more. Oh. My mind become worse than before. What happened? I'm thinking a lot. Before, I don't have so much thought like this. That is a good sign. What we call waterfall experience. For example, normally, when you see the muddy river, when you look at the muddy river, you cannot see fish. But then the river become more calm and clean, and you will see a lot of fish in the river. You might wonder, wow, so many fish are here, where they come from? But actually, they are there. 
So same like that. When, when we begin to meditate, our mind become more calm and peaceful, we will begin to recognize so many thoughts. So if you feel this agitation, like your mind become wild, a lot of thought emotion comes, I gaze, look down. Or sometimes close. And then if your mind become more balanced, look straight. So something like that. But also need to change. If you look at the one eyes gaze all the time, feel bored up to a certain level. So when you change your gaze, you feel fresh. And the second question about the meditation, actually in Tibet there are many, many meditation lineage and many monastery they practice and many places they study and practice together and they are like three year retreat centers also. And also nowadays also in the, um, my monastery we try to follow the um, Nalinda tradition. So in the Nalinda tradition, a lot of scholars they study in the daytime and then in the evening they contemplate in the morning they meditate. So study, contemplate, meditation together. So we try to uh, do that. Mm, thank you, next. Touch the lila. Do what the bigot would do something. Dandangala, do what can you do? Do what jig the danang so dame. So, so you send part second order. Send part to the Dandanga so you be you non dindy. So, so you dozen jig boots here, my amber. Dichala, Shenpengi, send part in a Shen Semjingi, Dungil, the so, Segi, Tapsiching among Allah and the Shigedo. That is so Danda dozen chair than Yamdo, Shengi, Dungil, the Tene, Dajan Jawala, Mikba Samne, D. Kevin Yuna, So, so you Rangi, Sem Jig boots in a Digomna, Kevin Gandana. There are many different types of meditation. So mainly what we call two things. Two wings of bird, which is related with the relative and absolute. And for the relative, there's the compassion, bodhicitta, there's a devotion, faith, all these are the relative aspect, method, method aspect. And for the absolute, is the wisdom to know the nature of reality, which is uh, impermanent, then emptiness. So there's different step-by-step -step practice. So we need both together. These are two wings of bird. So normally when we begin to meditate, first we take refuge, uh, refuge to Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So that is like your direction. And then develop loving kindness, compassion in Buddhicitta. And that is helps to get to your direction, off, help to go to the off track, Buddhicitta. Then practice the main meditation. So main meditation might be shamatha or vipassana, whatever practice. Then in the end, dedicate. So we need all this combined together. Dujungi Katun de Sutan, and Chisola Padro de Goman Yamden, now a Lamla Kenna Dreci Yola. Dil Yamdenilla, Injiminji, Gomba Padu, Rutola Dune, Gomye Dida, Chisola Dune, now a Lamla Kenna Dregi, Gomanilla, Cabar Gayunati. So I think most of you understand the question. Should I need to repeat or not? Yeah. Um, so this, this session is English based. So I will teach in Tibetan afternoon. So the, the question is, the, if you want to meditate, we have to renounce everything to go to the mountain, 
or we can meditate in our daily life to transform whatever comes in our life. So the answer is you can do both. The most important thing is like right now, what we learn right now is awareness, right? And the awareness is doesn't matter. You can practice awareness in the city. You can practice awareness in the mountain. So normal what we call, you can meditate everywhere, anytime, under any circumstances. So there are two types of meditation. One is formal meditation. The formal meditation is you sit on the uh, cushion or chair, whatever, and fully dedicate time for the meditation. Not communicate with others, not look at the phone, not television. <laughs> Fully time dedicated with the meditation. That's the formal meditation. So we need to have one formal meditation every day. At the beginning, don't meditate too long because then you cannot, you cannot continue. Maybe um, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, best is one hour, but uh, don't try to commit one hour at the beginning. So you can do one day, two day, then gone. <laughs> so... First important is we need to build up habit, new habit. To, to build new habit, it will take 30 days. So first week, okay. Second week, very difficult. Third week, okay. And the fourth week, more easy. So after 30 days later, you already have new habit. Then the second thing is informal meditation, which is you can meditate everywhere. So we all have breath, isn't it? Breath with us 24 hours. So you can be aware of your breath anytime. While drinking water, you can aware of your breath. Half breath, full breath, doesn't matter. You know, when you drink the water, okay, breathe. Right? Or when you uh, study, look at the book, and time to time, watch your breath. Again, think about meaning of book. Rest your mind with the breath. That way, it's good for study also. Your, your mind has opportunity to relax, and our mind become more open, more spacious, more creative. And not only that, also if you, if you are working in your life, if you have project, you can think first. And rest with your breath. And think again, rest. Or while you're having jawal dal, <laughs> or having uh, communicate with others, watching your phone, television, anytime, everywhere, short time, many time. Uh, I'm very much blessed to be here. And uh, I have a question that Rinpoche has mentioned that there are three forms uh, like sensations coming while we are meditating. But as I believe uh, there cannot be a place in our body where there is no sensation because our cells and tissues are always vibrating. I mean, always uh, moving and vibrating. Uh, therefore, if there is no sensation in our body, so uh, as I believe that isn't, the, uh, isn't a type of uh, lie because uh, our tissues are always vibrating and if the tissues are vibrating then there must be sensation in our mm -mm. body mm -mm. yeah good question so the main thing is <clears throat> for the experiential level at the beginning some part of body you cannot find sensation so many people special this happens in the <clears throat> so what we call normally Four bases of mindfulness practice. Mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of sensation, mindfulness of the mind, and mindfulness of phenomena. So there are many different traditions. Each tradition, they focus many different, especially in Buddhists, they focus more about the body or sensation or something. So those people who focus on the sensation, those traditions, and they are looking for the subtle sensation which is always there from top of your head to the feet. The 
subtle sensation. So if our mind can be with that subtle sensation, and eventually that really helps even dissolve the gross sensation. And these gross sensation are connected with the aversion, attachment, all this. So in the end, entire our body dissolve into the subtle sensation. And especially if you see that subtle sensation is changing, impermanent, moment by moment. And that is we can achieve our heart. So in that tradition, of course, a lot of emphasis about the subtle sensation. But the problem is many people looking for that subtle sensation. Then you are become like a dog chasing tail. Aversion, attachment also comes looking for subtle sensation, subtle sensation. So for <clears throat> our tradition is don't care. Most important is connect with awareness. If you see sensation, okay. If you cannot see sensation, okay. So no sensation meaning you don't see, you don't feel. Let it be like that. A very cordial uh, welcome to you, sir. Uh, and uh, I have this one problem for myself. Uh, because uh, I've uh, I heard that uh, while meditation we have to focus. And then uh, I have heard that while, med while meditating, uh, you need to let go, as you say. But yeah, from my experience, I have tried meditating. But when I try to focus, on my object, on my breathing, I get agitated, like because I ca I cannot hold it, hold on it, so I get depressed on it. But when I let go of my breathing or my mind, when I go of my thoughts, um, the thoughts, like uh, they run, like they are like crazy monkeys. So uh, I find it, uh, uh, yeah, when I think of my thoughts. Uh, because they are mostly related with the attachment and uh, mostly like pleasure thing. So uh, I feel pleasure in thinking more of the thoughts. So how to control mm -hmm. my thoughts? Because you said that we have to let go of the yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Hmm? So that's my problem. Yeah. Letting go is not giving up. So letting go meaning let it be as it is. It's the middle way. The middle way meaning the follow, the flow of the nature, flow of the truth. So when we are aware of our breath, as I mentioned before, don't block thought and emotion. You cannot block. But don't give up your breath. Let it try to back to the breath. Remember, am I? So, Sometimes what we call tempata shishin. Shishin meaning like mindfulness. So check, am, am I forget my breath or not? If you not forget your breath, then whatever this agitation, thought, monkey, mind, let them come. You don't have to worry about that. So don't get lost. But don't block thought and emotion. Uh, <coughs> I have two questions. Uh, my first question is that in ancient time, uh, uh, they are saying Dalai Lama arrives in uh, arrives in a nation, and uh, he Dalai Lama sees a person who has no head. Ancient time? Yeah, yeah. In ancient time, I have heard this story. There was a there is a man without having a head. Mm. So my question is that it is possible to uh, meditate without a head. <laughs> ah, six Dalai Lama life story, right? Oh, yeah, six Dalai Lama. Maybe. Oh, six right, 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 right. Six Dalai Lama. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything is possible, right? <laughs> Samsara meaning possibility. But <laughs> when you meditate, we have to think about the breath and uh, focus. On his. So we think from head. So. Which is possible yesterday. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, and my second question is maybe it's a little stupid question, mm -mm. but uh, there is a saying, uh, 
of Dalai Lama, sleeping is the best medicine. Mm. So it's really hard for me because <laughs> I always sleep, but how can it be? <laughs> you, you cannot sleep well? <laughs> oh, you're always sleeping? I always, I always sleep, but how can you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's really unsuitable. So in the Abhidhamma, what we call the food, of course, the regular food is also food, but sleeping is also like food for the body. So we need, now scientists said we have to, we need to sleep every day from six to eight hours, right? So normally we need to have balance for our body. So active and rest. So nowadays people are busy with life, special, in the night, many people sleep very late, and that is no good for the body. And even in the Tibetan medicine, uh, what we call the balance of um, resting and active has to be balanced. So sleep, good enough number of sleep is very good. But too much sleep, also no good, right? To less sleep, also no good. The middle way. Uh, good afternoon, and we are very blessed to be uh, making your appearance here. So we, we feel really great gratitude to your, toward you. Thank you. So the question mine is that uh, it is according to my own individual experience. So before a few months or a few months ago, I just tried to uh, to kind of some is like I. Can you say that it was accurate uh, meditation or not? I, I'm not sure about mm -hmm. that. But even I, try, I was trying to do that. So the thing I was pro facing problem that just I, when I, I was breathing, I was concentrating on my breath. And as you mentioned before, that you said that you should keep breathing, go out, come in. So I did for a long, for, just I did for five minutes maybe uh, that long. Not five minutes. It was just maybe about, it was about two minutes long. Mm -mm. So at that moment, just I was going deeper, deeper, deeper. So just I was the, in that stage that I was about to go much deeper and I was, I was just about to get lost in that stage. Mm. So after I just, I just thought it was so dangerous if I might get into the mm. uh, stage of uh, co uh, coma. Mm. So <laughs> that mm. could be also dangerous. So, so, so mm. for that solution, what we can do, what, what, would, what would be the... Best, uh, yeah. this one. Solution. Do you feel sometime here, like movement on the head, like opening, closing, heat? Yeah, yeah, just sometime. Uh, like, uh, not actually, but uh, just. Do you feel anything from spine, back, the, like, like tingling or like, some like electric movement? Yeah, like kind mm. of that electric kind of the, that was vibration on. Vibration, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we call energy movement. So sometime when we meditate, we will have this energy movement. So feeling like a vib vibration from the spine or inside the body or pressure from the head, <coughs> throat, heart center, and sometimes a little bit shake, some people. But this energy movement is not bad. It's good. Actually, what we call transforming prana bindu nadi, like the, the nerves, cells, energy in our body, transforming impure to pure. So therefore, we will have this energy movement. So energy movement has four things. The first is a sign for the body, in the body. Second is sensory perception. Someday you see dark color. Some people have even visions. Sound, hear the mantra or smell, taste. And third is sense of energy. Oh, this place has good energy. Oh, this place has negative energy. Third is emotion up and down. Like now you have this intensive experience going more deeper, deeper. In the end, you feel like almost losing yourself, right? So this is why you feel afraid. No problem, you can let it be. Um, but the most important is try to keep connected with awareness. If you feel like deeper, deeper, in that moment, do you aware of that feeling of deeper? So if you be aware of feeling of that deepness, then you are connecting with awareness. And then whatever you feel, see anything, don't attach to that. Just treat as like watching television. Hmm? Last question. 
Ramisila, my question is that when we do anapana meditation, we have to think uh, my uh, breathing is going to out and in. Hmm? If we think uh, uh, breathing is going to out and in, that is uh, that mind is uh, conceptual. Hmm? I think uh, when we do meditation, we need uh, non-conceptual. Hmm? You know uh, how to think this. Uh, mm -mm. Yeah, clearly. Good question. So, when Buddha was in India, Buddha taught about <coughs> emptiness, shunyata. And then also Buddha taught about compassion, six parameters, the generosity, or so on, so on. And then student asked same question. You said everything's emptiness, but sometimes you said, oh, compassion, devotion, help others. And these are concepts. They're subject and object. So it seems like a contradiction. And the Buddha said, the student was a farmer. Buddha said, when you make the farm, what is the best fertilizer? Or oh, something from the toilet, right? <laughs> um, and also, whatever the animal dungs. So these are dirty. But if you put into the uh, farm, it will grow green. So, although shamada is subject and object, aware of your breath is concept. And also, relative compassion, relative bodhicitta, devotion is concept, but good concept. And from there, we will develop Wisdom. So go beyond concept. Um, another example is Buddha said, if we wrap two woods, can produce fire. But in the end, the fire will burn wood itself. So using the good relative practice can develop wisdom. In the end, you can go beyond of that also. In order to cross river, we have to use boat. But once we cross the river, we don't need boat. Just like that. Uh, and then the, then the last one. Uh, I have a very simple question. Um, breathing meditation is actually very good uh, for calming our mind. Uh, um, yeah. But uh, mm, when we are doing visualization meditation, like uh, our own Lama Guru, um, how to achieve Clarity, because uh, clarity is very important in visualization. Mm. It's satisfying, mm -mm. but uh, how to achieve that? Uh, from my experience, uh, breathing meditation doesn't help much. Mm. Thank you. So, the shamatha meditation technique, there are many different style. Like um, in the many suttas, that mention about imagining Buddha, Shakyamuni, in front of you. Um, the golden color of Buddha. And you imagine the Buddha. And that is the one of the Shamada meditation practice. So how to develop clarity, for example, especially in the tantric practice, we have to uh, visualize Buddhas, deities in front of you front visualization, self-visualization. So for this, how to develop clarity? At the beginning, we cannot visualize very clear and no need to visualize very clear. The most important is, for example, if you want to imagine Buddha, just feel Buddha is there. The wisdom, compassion, and the blessings of Buddha is everywhere. There's no difference between day and night. No different between you pray or not. So, so whoever thinking of Buddha, Buddha is just right there in front of you. So when we feel the presence of Buddha, but then there's a lot of process of this visualization, what we call yo top gom. At the beginning, move. The image will move. The color will change. Shape will change. At the beginning, you cannot imagine anything. 
when you think of Buddha in front of you, your mind becomes blank, nothing. Buddha, nothing. Don't give up, <laughs> but let it go. The important is just feel the presence of Buddha. Even you cannot think of shape and color of Buddha. It doesn't matter. Just feel the presence. And then slowly, slowly, you will think a little bit. Then you will have the second experience, the moving, changing. So when you imagine Buddha very nice, suddenly Buddha become crooked. Ah, like this, or change color. You imagine blue Buddha, suddenly become red Buddha. Or sometimes what we call think of the head of Buddha, then feet disappear. Think of feet, head disappear. So sometimes what we call So the developmental practice is not development practice, it's disillusion practice. So that's normal. But even though Buddha appears as like ghost, most important is the Buddha's wisdom is there, compassion is there. So feel the presence of Buddha. Hmm? Yes. Last question, please. I cannot take more because of the time. I have two, two questions. And um, I would like to ask you from maybe your experience, retreat experience, one question like this. Uh, why in most of cases in Tibet, yogis think first three years retreat. Is it special something in this curriculum for three years, not for one or two or maybe five years? Maybe you can tell from your experience. This is first question. And second, recently I met one monk who was dreaming many years about retreats, but when in Nepal he went somewhere in mountains and was meditating on impermanence and death, and he said, I felt so afraid, but here no medicine, no hospital, and he was sick. And he thought, uh, I might die, and what to do in this case? So he said, I was so afraid, first time in my life. And he was quite brave monk, because he faced such reality. But he said, uh, I was honest with myself, and I stopped this meditation and this three-year retreat. So maybe from your feelings and your experiences of such retreats, maybe you can tell a little bit about mm -hmm. such reflections. Thank yeah. you. So the tradition of three year, three month <clears throat> retreat comes from what we call um, when we, this is special in the Vajrayana tradition, when we very serious practice and you will achieve enlightenment within one lifetime. So when we count about the, the breath, so one day we have 300, uh, um, 200, 21,000, right? 21,600. Yeah. So we have 21,600 breath. So normally what we call Every 32 breath, there's a half wisdom breath. So when you count this for 100 years, then that will be three years and three months, and three um, up and down lunar move. So if we really focus to practice meditation day and night, for three years, three months, then possible to achieve enlightenment. That's the reason. But of course, nowadays, our mind goes here and there, right? <laughs> Sometimes our body in the retreat, but mind goes everywhere, so it doesn't count. But the, the monk, what you mentioned, is um, one to practice to retreat, go to the mountain, and afraid of death, if possible, of course. So normally what we call, first, when you develop meditation experience, you have to stay with a safe place. You have to learn from the teacher and with the community of practitioner. So once you develop certain experience, then you go to wild place. So it's like making fire. So first you have to make fire with a safe place, with a small, tiny, 
woods and the, uh, like that, right? Once the fire becomes big, then wind, strong wind or at big wood, doesn't matter. So everything becomes the fire, just like that. Uh, really, Rinpoche gave very profound teaching on how to tame or how to control or how to mastery on our wild mind through the different analogies and uh, uh, with his own experience. Really, I think meditation is the only way to mastery our uh, mind. So Buddha has said in the sutra, you know, uh, there are three unconceivable powers, like the powers of cause and effect is unconceivable, which is, of course, in front of us. The diverse habitant and inhabitant is, the, of course, result of the cause and effect. And likewise, you know, Buddha has taught that the physics energy has unconceivable power. Again, that is which is in front of us, uh, we have the cell phones, we have the supersonic jets, and these all are, of course, the quality of the physics. Likewise, mind has also potential, you know, unconceivable potential. In order to achieve that uh, uh, mind power or spiritual power, we need, I think, the meditation. Meditation is the only way. Of course, Rinpoche Ji have you know, explain very simple way, you know, how to meditate, you know. Of course, in the meditation, as mentioned in Bojiji, awareness is the dominant factor of the meditation, you know. He's very simple way, explain, you know, what is awareness is, you know, very simple way. You know, if we do try in that way, definitely we will be able to achieve in mastery in our mind, I think. Uh, uh, with this, really, I uh, like to thanks to uh, Rinpoche for giving this opportunity. And last, now I request to Dr. Tashi Tsering for a delivered the uh, words of thanks. Tashi <coughs> Uh, first of all, I would like to convey heartfelt thanks to renowned uh, meditation master, Reverend Mingyu Rinpoche, for his excellent speech on the subject of meditation for mental peace and happiness, which was very lucid and detailed and in accordance with the present busy world. Therefore, thank you very much, Reverend Mingyu Rinpoche. I also would like to convey thanks to the Vice Chancellor of the Institute, Professor Kishengawa Samtenla, for arranging this opportunity of listening, contemplating, and discussion on the exalted speech of Reverend Mingyu Rinpoche for the Institute's faculty members, researchers, staff, and students. Therefore, thanks to the Vice Chancellor. I also like to convey thanks for all the faculty members, researchers, staff, and students who came here to use this privilege. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>